Demosthenes was born in the year 384 BC and today is considered as one of the greatest orators among the ancient Greeks. Among other things, he is famous for his anti-Macedoniaism and the segment was very important in his activities. Actually, Demosthenes led the Athens resistance against Macedonia. Demosthenes was born near Athens and he lost his father at a young age. As an adult, Demosthenes began to take interest in politics, in protecting the Greeks from the threat that was Macedonia, led by Philip II. Because of this, many of his great speeches were aimed against the Macedonians and the dangers of them. His first major and known speech against Philip II was made in the year 351 BC. This speech became known by the name First Philippic. Later, Philip attacked the city Olynthus, which was inhabited by the Greeks and was allied with Athens. Then, Demosthenes wrote three new speeches against the Macedonians, in which he demanded help from Athens to Olynthus. But Olynthus was conquered, and Demosthenes participated in the delegacy which negotiated between Athens and Macedonia. It was then that the second and third Philippic were created, which, again, had anti-Macedonian content. The Fort Philippic was created later. In the final battle in Chaeronea between the Macedonians and the Greeks in 388 BC, Philip II took over most of the Greek territories. But Demosthenes kept making his anti-Macedonian speeches demanding freedom for the Greeks. After Alexander the Great died in 323 BC, Demosthenes called the Greeks again to fight for freedom, but Alexander's heir, Antipater, broke all resistances and asked for Athens to bring out their patriot leaders, including Demosthenes. The Athens assembly, under Macedonian pressure, decided to sentence the leaders of the anti-Macedonian rebellion, including Demosthenes, to death. Demosthenes managed to escape on some island, where he committed suicide. A later ancient Greek historian Plutarch also noted Demosthenes anti-Macedonian activity. In his work, Comparison of the Demosthenes and Cicero, written in the year 75 BC, Plutarch writes, Demosthenes made up a great part of the services he did for his country, for he went through the cities of Greece and everywhere, as we have said, joined in the conflict on behalf of the Grecians, driving out the Macedonian ambassadors, and after his return, he again devoted himself to the same public service and continued firm to his opposition to Antipater and the Macedonians. Referring to Demosthenes' own writings, he also distinguished the Macedonians from the Greeks in his attacks against Macedonia. Even in First Philippic, he described Philip as, quote, a man of Macedonia subduing Athenians and directing the affairs of Greece. Still, Demosthenes pointed out the strongest evidence for the non-Greek origin of the Macedonians and their rulers in Second Philippic, where related to the Macedonian king Philip II, 
he gave the following statement. And yet, in regard to Philip and his conduct, they feel not this, although he is not only no Greek and no way akin to Greeks, but not even a barbarian of a place honorable to mention. In fact, a vile fellow of Macedon, from which a respectable slave could not be purchased formally. So, why did Demosthenes call Philip a barbarian? What did this word mean in the antics? Scientists are almost unanimous that the noun barbarian in the antics referred mainly to people who spoke a language incomprehensible to the Greeks with a dose of underestimation to their culture. Practically, all the nations that didn't speak Greek were called barbarians by the Greeks, while they called themselves Xenoi. This explanation of the word barbarian today is accepted by a great number of historians. Just as an example, we will mention the writings of the author Emma Strafford, who in her book Ancient Greece, Life, Myth and Art, writes that the Greek language was basic for the Greeks in order to distinct themselves from the barbarians on whose baba ba language they mocked. Finally, the ancient Greek authors themselves wrote what they mean by the term barbarian. A clear testimony to this gave the famous Athenian author Aristophanes. In his drama Birds, written in 414 BC, related to the barbarians, he wrote, I spent a lot of time with them and taught them how to speak, even though they were barbarians. We can clearly see here that the term barbarians for the people in ancient times meant people who do not speak Greek, people that aren't Greek, as was the Macedonian King Philip II and the ancient Macedonians.